a regional reporter and camera operator, off to the big smoke to bring the Central Coast community's questions direct to the powers that be. Whilst the region's lockdown was extended today until August 28, in line with Greater Sydney, there was some great news for the Central Coast. All workers leaving Greater Sydney uh, will now need uh, a permit and, and further to that, uh, they will need to have be COVID tested for the previous seven days before they actually go to regional and rural New South Wales. For, for the, to make it easy, we're redefining Greater Sydney and excluding Shoal Harbour and the Central Coast. So from here onwards, the Central Coast and Shoal Harbour will be treated as regional. So if you're travelling from Sydney to the Central Coast or to Shoal Harbour, you will need, uh, of course, a permit. Coast Community News spoke exclusively with the Deputy Premier afterwards for further clarification. Awesome. Um, so talk to me about Lara, I guess with the, we've now our own separate region, the Central Coast. Talk me through how this is going to work with the permit system and why that decision was made. Yeah, so we made the decision to include Central Coast and, and Shell Harbour as part of regional uh, so that we could actually simplify the permit system now that it only applies for people that live in either the Blue Mountains, Wollongong or the Illawarra and uh, Sydney. Uh, that means we can minimise that movement. We understand that the period of connectivity is important and protecting even the Central Coast from Sydney is important uh, because the Central Coast also has connections to Newcastle. This will mean in the future if we lift restrictions in regional rural New South Wales that would apply to the Central Coast and Shell Harbour excepting that if there are no cases on, on a local government level. So in, in one way the permit system I think has simplified the system for those communities. And how is that going to be policed obviously and you know maintain yeah. Yeah so you've got to, you've got to register for your permit come Saturday um, and you'll have to have that permit sitting in the window of your car for instance uh, have it visible police will be looking out for it police will be pulling people over and without a permit uh, there will be a fine and if you're not authorised to even get a permit and you're leaving Sydney well there will be significant fines. And how does that um, obviously you know with this how are we applying for these permits and what has the government done to you know maybe hope that it doesn't crash because obviously there's going to be a lot of people. Well there will be a lot of people so that's why we delayed it by a week. Service New South Wales has built the system they've been testing the system all week that's what goes online on Saturday but being it's important that we advise people because part of the permit system to leave Sydney as a worker you must have been tested you don't have to wait for your result but must have been tested uh, the previous seven days before you leave. So today you've given the reassurance Central Coast will be looked at as a region from moving forward. Um, I guess we're, we've extended the lockdown, but what does it look like in terms of the Central Coast, Newcastle, about getting out of lockdown, the light ahead? Yeah, so I'm, I'm very confident that the decision we made today is to protect the regions. Uh, we've got out, outbreaks in parts of central, uh, the Central West and Western New South Wales. We've got those issues that we were worried about in the southern part of the state uh, with Goulburn and Queanbeyan, and then Kempsey was a, a surprise. Surveillance testing for instance up at Yamba worries us still, Bado Bay worries us still. So there are there, there are signs that something else is in front of us. Like yesterday we didn't have gold, we didn't have Queenbeam, we didn't have Bathurst in, uh, as cases but today we do. So I'm confident by next Saturday uh, that we will be taking a local government approach to lifting restrictions in regional and rural New South Wales set on a number of criteria from cases, uh, from sewage surveillance and adjoining LGA. So I think we've got a, we've got a method to get out and I'm confident next Saturday uh, big parts of regional New South Wales will be La free. Last question, um, obviously moving forward the government in the speech this morning was that we need to get vaccinated to get out of this. Um, Central Coast obviously I asked you yesterday, I don't know if you've had a chance to have a speak with um, Health about Absolutely. our jab numbers <clears throat> and that, but is the Central Coast on its way or where do we sit? Obviously we performed quite well with the federal study, we were over 40 something percent higher than Newcastle. Yeah, so, so it looks some good news coming out of the Central Coast that it's not being left behind, you know, firstly you've got the Wyong hospital and the Gosford hospital that are vaccine centres. Then there are another 100 access points through our GP network. So there's some, some access points right across the central coast. On average, there are about 21,000 uh, jabs uh, go out each and every, uh, has already occurred in, on the central coast. So you're at about 27.5% first dose, uh, sorry, double dose and 55% single dose. So you're actually on par with the, the Sydney average or the state average, which means you're not being left behind. So AstraZeneca is available, and as the Pfizer supply continues, it'll it'll continue to come out. But we're, we're pushing out something like 5,500 jabs a week, which puts us on good trajectory to hit those targets in line with the rest of Sydney. As for when the region's students will return to school, here's what the Premier had to say. Following on with the schools from a regional level, obviously Sydney's numbers are quite high. If return to school, will you be looking at more of an LGA type approach or a statewide approach, obviously? 
uh, do venues that looking like communities like the Central Coast will be able to return to school? And secondly, when will our HSC students be able to access forest vaccine? Yeah, certainly. So in relation to um, vaccinations for young people, obviously in September we're getting many more doses of the, of the Pfizer vaccine, which uh, high, high school students are able to access. So obviously we're looking forward to that process. But in relation to schools in the rural and regional communities, as the Deputy Premier said and as the health uh, experts, Dr Chand and, and other health experts have said, uh, it really depends on uh, what the case numbers are doing in regional and rural communities uh, when we're moving forward. We have used a model in the past where there's been a separation between Greater Sydney and the regions and if that is safe from a health perspective, we'll continue to do that but it really depends on the health advice. So all I want to say to our rural and regional communities especially in relation to, to schools is keep working hard, keep coming forward and getting tested, keep getting vaccinated. The, the lower the incidence of disease in the regions means there are greater opportunities. But again, uh, that's advice we'll take from the experts. Sky Hull, Central Coast News.